What's up YouTube, my name is Label, and today we're talking about practice. I love to practice. I mean, I hate to practice, but I kind of love to hate to practice. Okay, here's what I mean. Practice is really hard, you know? It's daunting, it's time consuming, it's exhausting, it can be painful. But if you think about it, practice is also like really the only way to become great at something. And because that cost and that barrier to injury is so high, Practice can also be really rare. Like those few people who have the grit and the determination to put in consistent practice are the ones who end up achieving something remarkable and valuable. And that's why I love it, even though it's hard, because it's like the only pathway to becoming great at whatever you want to do. So with that in mind, last month I did an experiment. I decided to make a drawing of my own hand every day of the month. And this was partly just to further my own practice in drawing, but I also filmed the process and made notes along the way so that I could document this practice journey so that we can review it here and see how bad I am at drawing. But I will say that this is not a video on drawing in particular. Like you probably won't come out of this learning how to draw good hands. Instead, it's really about the general principles of practice that we can all apply to practice more and better and ultimately achieve a higher level of skill in whatever it is that matters to us. But okay, enough of me talking. Let's go watch me draw some terrible hands. All right, so diving in here to day one, I'm actually already struggling right at the beginning. And that's somewhat surprising because I do have quite a bit of experience drawing over the past few years. I haven't drawn hands much, but I'm also not starting at zero, but it's fine to struggle. The idea here on day one is really just to get something out onto the page. It can be as bad as it needs to be. It's just a low benchmark to get us started and see where we are. Um, as, as rough as this, drawing is, I, I found it to be really difficult. Like it pushed me as hard as I could go for about half an hour and it was really exhausting when I finished. So I started day two by actually just spending a few minutes as I did most days, just trying to understand where I went wrong on day one, why it was so difficult, and then figuring out what I could do to improve those weaknesses. So I actually chose to do the exact same pose and just focus on proportion and scale above all else. I also found this session to be extremely hard. It was about 35 minutes of really intense focus and I was so exhausted at the end that I had to take quite a long break from doing any other work just to kind of recover my mental strength after such a difficult uh, challenge. And that actually became kind of a pattern for the entire month. This was such a difficult, relentless practice that it almost drove me crazy. But hey, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're only on day two. I didn't record every day, and for day three, I just have the final drawing, which is yet again a similar pose. And one thing that can be difficult in a process like this is understanding when to continue drilling your weaknesses and when to move on to the next level. So in this case, for now, I figured like I was struggling so much uh, on day one and two that it would be wise to do another repetition before adding anything new, which is what I did here. But on day four, I did make a pretty big change. Uh, in doing my daily assessment of the previous drawings, I realized that I was struggling because my lighting was very flat. I did that partly for the recording purposes because flat, even lighting without harsh shadows looks better for the video, but it makes it much more lifeless and flat when you're drawing and it makes it much more difficult. So I used a lamp here with a harsh shadow and that did help. It's not great, but I do feel like these initial days have shown some progress so far, and that is encouraging. Thankfully, I don't have a video of this. It was the most challenging day so far. I had to start over and completely erase the drawing multiple times just to get the basic form onto the page. I ran 16 miles in the heat before doing this and just really wasn't into it. Um, I just willed myself through it and it actually ended up probably the best so far, I would say. The shadows are more defined and the proportions are more accurate. But overall, it was discouraging because it was just such a struggle after you know five days of practice. Today I decided to take a step forward in using toned paper. This is the same general pose, but the toned paper will make the drawing look a lot better because we can use the black pencil to add shadows and now add a white pencil to add the highlights. 
and the gray paper itself is the mid-tone so we have three shades versus just light and dark uh, which should look a lot better it'll look more dynamic and exciting it's just yet another way of kind of stepping up the pressure adding another element giving myself something else to contend with however i spent almost a full hour on this drawing even though it's pretty basic and it was very very exhausting because I'm still struggling so much just to get the basic shapes and proportions onto the page, I actually took a really big step back and spent the day making two simplified drawings where I broke the hand down into their basic shapes. Cylinders, squares, whatever it might be. And this was really helpful just to visualize again, all the boxes and the cylinders that make up the hand. Uh, and it's a great lesson in general, I think, when you're trying to get better at something. If you're struggling to get it right, find a creative way to step back and do the same thing in a more simplified way to kind of explore the fundamentals. It will always pay dividends to practice the fundamentals. Like for example, a drawing instructor that I've used quite a bit once said that even though he has 20 years of experience, he still regularly draws pages and pages of circles and straight lines because those are so fundamental to everything else you're going to do in drawing. And you can never be too good to practice the fundamentals. So that push and pull is something that you'll see often in these series of drawings. I'll take a few days to focus on the details or the fundamentals, then a few days to make a more finished drawing, always kind of going back and forth uh, to hit this process from every angle to never get in a rut with the practice I don't have videos of day eight and nine but what I did here was similar to yesterday but in a totally different way so again I took a step back but in in this case I took a step back to look at the skeletal structures of the hand just to understand how the bones are forming the skeleton beneath what I'm drawing and actually for day eight, I used an anatomy drawing book, which is perhaps my favorite book that I own. It's called Classic Human Anatomy. And it's an absolute masterpiece of art and anatomy with detailed drawings and all the medical terminology of the bones and the ligaments. And it is incredible. And as someone who considers himself equal part artist and scientist, this book is like a dream come true for me. But moving on to day nine, I actually realized I had an old x-ray of my own wrist, which I used to do the drawing here, which was super cool because I got to draw the bones of my own hand. Uh, and I didn't bother doing a lot of shading here. This is a marathon process, so not everything needs to be totally finished every day. But it was great. I got the experience that I needed to understand the more basic forms underlying the hand. Day 10 was an incredible achievement. It was the best day so far, and I don't exactly understand why, but it just came together much more quickly and easily than the days before. And I feel like the heel of my hand is probably too large, um, and that's mostly just because of the perspective I used with my wrist closer to me. But overall, I think it looks great, and the easiness of today reminds me of a book by George Leonard called Mastery, where he explains that growth tends to happen in spurts. So like all of a sudden, you jump up to a higher level. Then it's followed by something of a dip, and then a long plateau kind of out in the middle. And then another growth spurt, and another dip, and another plateau. So today feels like one of those growth spurts. And almost invariably, I expect that to be followed by a dip and a long plateau, because I've done this enough. But it's great, it's great to see the progress happening. Um, you'll also see here that I switched to using an iPad. This is because honestly, holding my left hand steady for 30 or 45 minutes every day after day after day was becoming really tiring. And the photo gives me more of a static reference that doesn't change if I need to get up or rest my hand. So that's more for practical reasons and I think it was a good decision. All right, another day, another drawing. And here on day 11, as I'm always continuing to assess my weaknesses, I'm realizing that what I need most right now is more accuracy plus speed. I feel like I can get the forms right if I take like 20 minutes, which is just absurd. So today I designed a new drill for myself where I would make three drawings of three different poses and I only had five minutes to do each of them. It was excruciatingly hard and the drawings are awful, but it was also really helpful. Once again, we're already back to that dip that I mentioned yesterday, but uh, one thing I've learned for sure is that if you're if you want to be great at something You've got to love the dips. You've got to love the struggle and today was definitely a struggle But I feel like there was a lot of value in it as well 
Okay, this one is funny. Um, it, again, it was the weekend. I had gone for a 16 mile trail run that morning and I just felt like taking things in a little bit of a different direction or tackling this problem from a different vantage point. And I realized that after staring at my hand for 30 or 60 minutes a day for 11 days, I had a pretty good memory of what it looked like. So I, I wanted to see if I could make a drawing of my hand without ever looking at my left hand or using any reference photos or anything like that. And it's pretty hilarious because it's actually not that bad considering that I didn't use any references and I just drew it from memory. I'm not really sure if this has any value, but it was a fun way to change things up. It used a slightly different part of my brain for the same task. And I think that can only be a positive. It was also actually a lot easier than I imagined it to be. So who knows what to make of this, but it was fun. Now, I guess I lied when I said that I drew my hand every day because this is not a whole hand. It's really just a finger. And the reason I wanted to do this gigantic finger study is because when I get to the final drawing, those details of the rendering the shadow and the light are gonna matter quite a bit. And I'm really struggling to get the detailed shadows of the fingers especially. So this was actually pretty daunting and I'm worried about making that transition from basic shapes to and simple gestures off to more detailed shaded drawings. I've only got 17 days left and I feel like it's gonna be a real challenge to get proper light and shadow. Uh, this looks a bit weird in the end and um, I don't think I did a great job with it. So we'll see how it goes. I found the speed drills on day 11 to be so effective that I decided to do another round of those today. The five minute gestures, uh, just to see how accurate I could get my poses within a strict limit of five minutes. I feel like these drawings are kind of embarrassing and awful, but I also think the repetition was invaluable as I'm struggling to get the proportions accurately. As much practice as I can get with that is going to help. Okay, and as we're nearing the halfway mark of this project, I kind of just wanted to give myself a bit of a sanity check by trying to complete a more completed and finished drawing. Like I've been trying to drill all of my individual weaknesses so far, but now I need to try to put them all together and see where I stand as a whole so that I know exactly what I need to work on and where my limitations are moving into the second half of this project. I expect this finished drawing to take a few days and that's fine. I ultimately spent about two hours in total on this hand over days 15, 16, and 17, which is way, way too much for what it is. And as always, I'm still struggling to get the correct proportions and measurements of the initial sketch. So even after all this focused work and years of drawing experience, it's still a struggle. I also apologize for the quality of the video here. The white balance setting was flipping out on this one as the clouds kept coming overhead and somehow I lost half of the first video. But honestly, at this point, video issues were the only trouble I wasn't having with this project. <laughs> so it only makes sense to pile those on as well. As I'm getting deeper into this, I also realized that the hand is probably the single hardest subject I've ever tried to shade. The extreme complexity of the forms and the lack of strong shadows is really driving me insane on this hand in particular and the project in general. And just to take a quick sidebar on all of this, I didn't quite realize how difficult the hand is to draw. The problem is really all about foreshortening. And again, this isn't a drawing class. We're not gonna go deep into the idea of foreshortening, but really it's the idea that an object gets smaller than how, it, how big it actually is based on how you view it. So if you were to look at my hand flat, there's no foreshortening and everything is in correct proportions. But if you were to look down like the end of my finger straight on, it's basically just a circle, even though you know the finger is bigger. But then if I bend it like this, it takes on a more complex shape where it's bigger than a circle, but shorter than the actual length if it's just flat. And that's really hard to get right and very hard to shade if you're looking at an object in foreshortening. But with a hand, you've got 12 different cylinders that can all be in different lengths of foreshortening. Then you have the two metacarpals of the thumb, the triangular wedge of the thumb, again, all can be in foreshortening. Then the kind of rounded box of the hand. Then you add on top of that various levels of fat and muscle and wrinkled skin. And then the entire form itself 
can be in different levels of foreshortening. And then you have to realize that humans are so good at obviously knowing what a hand is supposed to look like. So even if you make small inaccuracies, they're gonna show up as really big and glaring inaccuracies. Whereas if you were doing something like butternut squash, no one would know. So a long story short to say, the hand is a really difficult subject to draw. Um, so this is really stressing and straining my drawing abilities. But anyways, no excuses, let's keep going. This took too long, but the end result is actually one of the best hands of the series. I think it's really accurate. It has a sense of three dimensionality with the white highlights giving the back of the hand some life and movement. I'm really digging this one. And now here on day 18, just to be cruel to myself, I decided to compare my hands with Leonardo's hands. So I found his most famous hand drawing and posed my own hand in kind of a similar way and drew from that photo reference. It turned out all right, and if I look at it in isolation, I think it is one of the best in the series. But obviously when you compare your drawings with Leonardo's, you're not gonna come out looking very good. I also realized something really significant at this point, which is that I'm running up against my drawing skills as a whole. So it's no longer about just mastering the peculiarities of the hand, it's more about my ability to see contours moving around to form and to render light and shadow. And at this point, in order to improve my hands, I feel like I've got to improve as an artist in general. And that's a daunting proposition because that's not something that's going to be perfected in the next 12 days of this project. Again, on day 19, I decided to do three more of those five minute poses just to relentlessly drill proportions and speed. This was the worst day by far. Uh, again, the recurring theme is that it was the weekend. I'd gone for a long run before doing the drawings and that just doomed them, I feel like. It, if it's not obvious, these drawings are really physically and mentally taxing. So if I've already used up a lot of my strength and willpower by going for a long run, the drawings don't end well. That's been a recurring theme on every day where I've gone for a long run. But it's also kind of sobering to realize that I feel like I've gotten much worse after 19 days. And I don't really know what to say about that. I mean, yes, the poses are only five minutes, but they're still like really, really embarrassing. Thankfully, they're so light you can hardly see them, but I have nothing further to say about these. Let's just move on. Okay, after such a miserable day yesterday, I had to just kind of pick myself up and get back at it. And I actually did something new here that I'm surprised I waited this long to start doing. So I mentioned earlier that accurate feedback is essential to improvement. And one excellent way to do this with drawing is by making a drawing from a photo reference, taking a photo of your drawing, and then overlaying the two in like photo editing software to see how accurate you were, as you can see me demonstrating here. And then you can make corrections in like a different color on the original drawing and eventually do another drawing of the same photo reference to see where you went wrong and correct your mistakes. This is really powerful. Um, and in this form in particular, holding the wooden dowel is an extremely complex subject with lots of foreshortening. And I do have a little bit more understanding and compassion for how bad yesterday's five minute drawing was of this, because it's something that would be very difficult to get right in five minutes. But still, you can see how bad this drawing was before the corrections, with all the corrections in the red marker here. And during this major dip, I just have to kind of trust that skill is being developed, you know, that progress is being made, even though I can't see it at all right now. I've been so upset by how bad those last two days of drawing have gone that I just had to continue drilling that subject until I get it right. There's really nothing that upsets me more than failing or being unable to do something. So I absolutely had to get this right before I could move on. And this is, you know, the grind. This is the part that's very unsexy and boring and difficult and not fun, but it's also, I think, the most important part. You know, this is an extremely difficult pose, and if I can get this right, then I can pretty much draw any hand. So I feel like the end result here is messy, but again, I did that overlay, and you can see that the proportions and scaling are much more accurate, and they work really well in this drawing. So I feel like we've accomplished our goal here. Um, it was a difficult three days, but in the end, I think I got it right, and I learned a lot. 
Since we now have just eight days left, uh, I really have to start moving on from my proportional issues and just hope that I've done enough because I really also need some time to work on one of my other major weaknesses, which is shading these complex forms like knuckles and joints. So here I spent an hour just forcing myself to conceptualize how the light and shadow is moving over the finger in the study. And in the end, I really love the unfinished quality of this drawing where parts are in focus and detailed and then it slowly starts to fade into a more unfinished contour line around the edges. I think that's really beautiful and it has this really nice quality to it that I wanna remember because I wanna put this into my finished drawing and I wanna make more drawings like this. It was something of an accident or it just happened and I think it looks really good. It was something I wasn't aware of at the time because I kind of lost all my sense of objectivity as I was mired in the details. But looking at it here with fresh eyes, it has a sense of kind of aliveness and beauty that I would have never gotten earlier in this project. So I feel like this is an incredible sign of progress even though there's been so many struggles. This is a great result. Today it was relatively straightforward to get the right proportions and perspective, which is an awesome sign. The thumb is too big, but whatever. Um, it's great that I finally didn't struggle quite as much as I have been to get the right form. But even as I watch this video uh, and compare it to where I was on day one, you can just see that I'm drawing more accurately with a lot more confidence. So who knows what tomorrow will bring, but this is a good sign so far. And my goal here, again, was to use a reference from the anatomy book like I did with the Leonardo pose a few days ago and just try to kind of emulate their style with my own hand. Uh, and this is really important. I think there's few things we can do that are more valuable than copying masters in our industries. And what I'm noticing in particular is that the masters here are so much better at breaking down the hand into simple forms. They're at a whole other level where they can just communicate like so much information in fewer, simpler, bolder lines. And that's kind of depressing because I'm just not quite at that level yet. But the best I can do is kind of learn from them and slowly start to build my skill in that direction. Now, similar to yesterday, I just set up my hand in a position that I found in the classic human anatomy book. And for whatever reason, it was a massive struggle again. <laughs> After about 30 minutes of trying to get the proportions right, for this one, I just threw up my hands and literally could not go any further. It was one of the most difficult days and I actually just completely abandoned the drawing. But I had to fix it on day 26. And at first I didn't feel like it was ideal to spend two of these final days on this one failed drawing, but I actually found it really helpful to go back to this drawing to follow kind of the story of the drawing that I was copying in the book. And I realized again, how this artist had such a high level of mastery, how they were able to simplify the form into these gestural lines that so effortlessly conveyed the volume and the structure. So going back to this hand a second day to kind of understand why and how it was so great actually ended up being a hugely valuable lesson and I'm glad I did it. Well, at day 26, uh, for better or worse, we're really at the end of the road with this project. Uh, I need to start figuring out what the final drawing is going to look like. So I actually spent quite a bit of time today just trying to get a photo of my hand in a pose that looks good, that has the right shadow and depth that'll make a good finished drawing. So I did that. And then I also just made a quick mock-up of that final pose on the same type of paper that I'll be using in the end. It was another Saturday, another long run, and I wasn't super motivated, but at the end, this is just a simple graphite sketched, but I managed to come up with the final pose and get the proportions right, and it'll hopefully set me up for success moving into the final drawing. All right, on day 27, we've made it to the final project because I started the final drawing here today, which I'll spend the next three or four days working on, slowly just kind of bringing it up to a more finished level. And my goal today was just to use fairly light graphite strokes to draw the contours of the hand in the right perspective. And by the way, throughout this series, I've been using uh, polychromos oil-based colored pencils, which are my favorite drawing medium. They they make much more expressive lines. They give you a much wider range of dark and light line widths, but they're also a little, a little more difficult to erase. So if I'm really just trying to get the contours right, I'll draw with a light graphite and then 
overlay it in the future with um, the colored pencils. Today actually went really well. Uh, I took my time, just had some fresh eyes, and I went slowly to get the contours right, and I think it turned out great. So tomorrow I can start working more on drawing the contours and getting as much flow and simplicity into the drawing, uh, and then spend the final two days rendering out the shadow and the detail into a finalized drawing. And again, as I'm continuing into 28, my goal is really just to get the broad contours as accurately drawn out with the colored pencil as possible, Keeping in mind, you know, all the little details that I've learned so far, like how to use overlaps to convey, convey forms and how to render the, the line of termination around these complex forms as best as I can see it. And it's a very challenging pose and I don't feel super confident with how it's turning out, but I'm doing what I can and we'll see how it goes. But moving into the penultimate day, I actually feel pretty anxious because this drawing isn't coming together as much as I would have hoped. And this is like it, right? This is the end of the final project. If this one fails after an entire month of practice, then my video will be ruined. And all the time I put into recording this and making notes is gonna be for nothing. Uh, so there's actually a lot more pressure than I feel on most drawings. Uh, and I'm not sure how that's affecting me, but here at the end of my session, I'm actually extremely happy with where things are headed. It was one of those rocky days where we were right on the edge um, and I just had to focus and will myself to get the drawing in shape and, and back on track. And ultimately, I feel like we're looking pretty good heading into the final day where I can add some highlights and further refine all the details. And on day 30, the last day of this final drawing, um, I know we're gonna make it to the finish line. Like this isn't a perfect drawing by any means, but I just need to get it finished, like I said, to refine some of the highlights and a little more detail. And to that end, today is kind of about both the big and the small, focusing on those details, but then also stepping back to see how the drawing is working as a whole. Again, keeping in mind everything I've learned about rendering such a complex form like the hand. And one thing I'm being very mindful of here at the end is not overusing the white pencil, which I had done in some of the other drawings. So I wanted to start out very light and sparse and see how it goes. And in the end, for better or worse, this is where we ended up. All right, so these 30 days were obviously extremely challenging and difficult. The hand is such a complex form, and the daily nature of this was so relentless, doing it on camera day after day without a break. Um, there were so many ups and downs, and I have a bunch of takeaways and things that I learned about drawing that I think can make me a better artist. But again, this is not about drawing, it's more about practice in general, whether it's programming, business, art, or whatever it is that you want to do, I think there's a pattern for getting better over time. And it's the same across domains. It's the same one that I tried to use here. And I just wanted to talk about a few takeaways that I have from this process. So the first one is there's really no shortcut or substitution for practice. In order to get better, you have to show up daily or weekly or whatever it is. And I think that itself is kind of obvious, but what's really important and the point that I wanna make here is that you can't get better unless you're pushing yourself into a level of maybe discomfort or struggle. If the work isn't really challenging your body and your brain until you kind of start to freak out a little bit and push yourself a little bit into the unknown, you're probably not going to be growing or developing even if you're showing up. Like we really have to make each session count and push ourselves to get better and better and do things we couldn't do the day before. Another thing that I think my experience really illustrates watching these videos is that you can't judge your progress from one day to the next. In fact, if you want to judge yourself in the short term, my favorite metric is actually struggle. It's not how much better you were today versus yesterday, but how hard you worked and how uncomfortable it was. That's the best measure of success you know, from one day to the next. In my experience drawing these hands, you can see that it was not a linear process. The hands didn't just get better every day. There were some days where it was great, and then the next day, for whatever reason, it was terrible. Because progress is never linear. In the real world, there's so much variability. Like, you might be 90% on fire one day, and then for a few days, for whatever reason, you're at like 10%, and then you're gonna be at 50%. You just have to have kind of the understanding to know that 
it's going to be a process with a lot of variability and you have to trust the average or the trend line. Trust that it will increase over time, over months and years. Like if you practice every day for six months, that day-to-day -day journey will be wild and unpredictable, but you can bank on the fact that over time, it, at the end of those six months, you'll be better than you are today. And that's really all you can know for sure is that progress will happen over time, but not day to day. And the last thing I wanna mention is that it's been a few weeks since I finished this project. And since then, I've actually continued to keep drawing every day. And I've spent my time focusing on kind of simplicity, like finding more power in fewer lines, uh, like simple line work that conveys more information and has more power. And as I look back on this finished drawing, um, it actually feels somewhat overdone and rigid, like it doesn't have a whole lot of dynamism or life. And I feel like today I could do a lot better. And this is probably the most exciting thing that I wanted to point out about this whole process, which is that if you're practicing right, you can never reach the finish line. There's always more to learn and more skill to develop. So it might seem kind of depressing for me to sit here and realize, well, I went through this rigid and like really difficult process and now I feel like what I did is obsolete. But that is exactly the point. The purpose of practice is to get better than you were before. So if you think about it, the intended outcome of, of hard work is that that hard work will become inferior because by doing it, you pushed yourself to a higher level where you can see things that your former self couldn't see and you can do things they couldn't do. So in that way, you can never really reach your own potential because it's always a moving target. So I'll leave you with that thought that the journey of greatness is one that does not have a destination.